Is the physique of the man the most important trait to determining how you're going to be treated by people? Let's talk about it. I know there's my friends that are very poofy. They get treated goofy. But then my friend who is like a strong and Chad, he never gets treated wrong or bad. We got to talk about this post, Andrew. It says... Body physique is everything. Three Asian males experience traveling Italy with different physiques and the attitudes and racism we encountered. Wow. So this is a Reddit post. This guy talks about him going to Italy with two other guys, and they all kind of look a little bit different, shaped differently. One guy's really, really fit. The other two not as fit. And he basically said that the two non-fit guys, him included, got treated worse. Yeah, well, let's get into it, Andrew. He said, I'm 6'1", 220. I'm not, I'm just slightly overweight and sort of a fatty, strong look. Killer cast. Let me tell you this, Andrew. I know exactly what body type he has because I have that type of body type. And then he said, nothing really bad happened, but he didn't get treated that good. You know, not too bad. And then they said they have a 5'10 friend who's 160 pounds, not a lot of muscle mass, and people were catcalling him with ni hao in a negative way. Mm, so this guy probably apparently looked or appeared to be a more typical looking Asian person. Yeah, yeah. I would assume, honestly, he has a fobby haircut because he said, they said when they were walking around Rome, the Italian staff were like, Chinese, Chinese, pointing at him almost in a way that he wasn't comfortable with. Right, and calling him Chinese is the word for Chinese, and it's kind of like, did he look so Chinese they knew he was Chinese and had to point it out? What, he couldn't have been Korean or Vietnamese? And then their last friend is the shortest guy. He's 5'10", 190 pounds, but he's very muscular and fit, visible biceps and triceps, big delt, and basically he just got treated the best. And they were all talking about it basically saying they all noticed that he got treated better than everybody else. Oh, all right, guys, we're going to talk about it because I think that, you know, when it comes in, in a world of fitness and aesthetics, obviously the physique is part of your looks and looks is part of how at least random people are going to treat you. So there may be different environments and all these different things, but we're going to break it down because we got five things that you need to remember about how your physique affects how you're being treated. Right, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Small Last Sauce on Amazon right now. Uh, the first main comment was, dude, if you look weak, it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, in any language, people will F with you. This isn't an Asian male thing, it is a male thing, period. Mm. I'll tell you this, it is more of a Western male thing. I think it happens anywhere in the world, but the West, you feel this sort of like, body physique, stature, height ranking, I would say 500% of what you feel in Asia. Right. Maybe 300%, I don't know, like maybe 500% is an exaggeration. Somebody said, you don't need to go to Italy to see how this is exactly how the same way it is in America. And this guy said, yep, I'm from Texas and Texas is exactly like this. Mm. Okay, so it made me think of this other post I had to Google because a lot of guys are wondering right now, Andrew, is the lookism more on physique? Is it more on height? Or is it more on how your face looks? Mm. So basically a lot of people are wondering this question on the internet right now, Andrew. Why is life so brutal for ugly men? Why is life so cruel to short men? Mm. What if I'm ugly and short, right? And then of course, a lot of other posts are saying, well, being ugly is a choice. It's about how you react to different cards that you're born with, mm -hmm. okay? Somebody said, I'm very attractive already, and on days where I don't do my hair, and I've got a lot of pimples on my face, and I don't dress up, I'm treated much worse than on my days where I'm looking my best. Yeah, presentability is also part of looks. Right, I think it's really interesting to hear it from the guys who are already really good looking. And then somebody said, it can be a blessing to be short and ugly because it allows you to focus on your goals in life. Nobody will try to ask for your time and waste your time. That is so funny. Uh, Jack Ma actually said that exact thing. That's hilarious. Jack Ma, the billionaire. And then he said, well, the thing about be having any sort of disadvantage in life, whether you are born with a bad physique at the outset, whether you are born very short at the outset, or you are born very ugly at the outset, is that you just have to be elite at everything else to make up for it. Mm, okay. So anyway, those were just the main comments. So um, here's the five points that you need to remember about public perception, especially as an Asian guy, Andrew. Number one. It varies on the environment. Yeah. And I think to me, environment is not just the country you're in or the city you're in, but also the scene you're in. Because like, obviously you could go to Eastern Europe. Maybe you're getting treated better than Western Europe. Maybe obviously you go to Asia, you're going to get treated better than in the West. But also, also not just that, 
it's also like there's more judgmental places than others. Like if you want to talk about the most judgmental places on earth, you're talking about like nightclubs, day clubs, high-end gyms like equinoxes you know open space shopping areas like the soho district or arts district or melrose or beverly you're Hills. saying these places where people are known for aesthetics and this chadism yeah. and stuff like any that. place where people have to prepare to go to you know and is about looking cool or that you might see a celebrity at or is 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 actually based around looks which is like shopping right that's right. all just fashion and aesthetics right there so of course those areas are going to be more judgmental you know, but maybe less judgmental areas are going to be like a convention, especially a niche convention, uh, a church, a, a classroom, a humble mom and pop restaurant. You know, who knows the suburbs well, versus the city. Well, Andrew, at church, they might be less judgmental on how you look in your clothes. Well, depending on what church you go to, but more maybe judgmental about your family situation. Right, right. But like if mean, your parents are still together or not. Yeah, listen, I mean, every any area might judge you visually, but pe certain things and certain things that you do in activities will put you in certain positions where people are more open to people of all styles. Every fishbowl has different metrics. And uh, they were in Italy. I would say from the Italians that I know from Italy and Italian Americans I know, they tend to be particularly resist or chattist. Would you agree with that? Mm. Like even more than heightist. I actually think Americans are more heightist. But Italians, not that tall themselves, especially Southern Italians, but they are very swaggist. Yeah, you mean like uh, basically- They like cool guys. Yeah, if you don't got a chain on, you're not fit, you don't look like you- uh, walk with some swag. They want to see tan skin and some chains. Yeah, I mean, listen, these three Chi Asian guys, I don't know if they're Chinese, but these three Asian guys, they're not short. 6'1", 5'10", and 5'10". Those are solid heights. A lot of Asian dudes out there would love to have your guys' heights. Listen, you non-buff friends, you're not doing enough then. Right, right, right. Here are some photos. Uh, this is a non-buff Asian guy getting with an Eastern European girl. And, of course, this is gold medalist Carlos Yulo, who is really, really short with his tall Filipino girlfriend. Oh, but, but he's I'm, ripped and yeah, he's a gold he, medalist. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it kind of goes back to that other point of, like, you could compensate for it. But we're going to get into it later. Um, this guy said, the point number two, you're better off working on yourself and making yourself better because you cannot change society. Right. And I think that this point is just a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow because it's also uh, attacks the point of people being like, well, isn't this unfair for Asian guys? Like what, Asian guys, we gotta be so much better just to get the same attention in the world. Well, no, not if you wanna stay in Asia, but if you wanna thrive in the Western world, the truth is you gotta be a little bit better. You gotta put in a little bit more work. You have to be more on point. You have to be a little bit more on point. I'm not saying you have to be 10 out of 10 on everything. I'm not saying you got to be a freaking Navy SEAL to get some respect. But you might have to try a little bit more because you are starting from behind. But here's the good thing, guys, is that there are certain things about you that you can really control. You probably can't control what face you're born with. Okay, your facial features. Although, I guess if you want to go to extreme lengths, there are ways you can change that. But essentially, your body shape, you can change. You can actually change that within right. months. Well, somebody said the reason why people value muscle so much is because it shows that the men uh, that have them had to work, struggle, have discipline, diet, and have sacrifice for those muscles. Yeah, you know what? That is exactly what muscles tell you, especially ripped muscles. They tell you that this man lifts weights. He has endured some pain. That's the, also the same thing with having tattoos. I know not everybody's pro tattoo here, but I'm just saying when... People, I've seen people with tattoos talk to each other and the way they talk to each other is a little mm. different because like they both are like, oh yeah, you went under the needle and got this paid money to go through pain to have this marking on your body forever. Well, so you're, you're in that club. You're sort of, yeah, you are. I mean, you talk to people in the club different than you talk to people outside of the club. Yeah, and when you work out and you're fit, you fit into this I'm athletic and I care about fitness club. Right. Well, this guy said, I am happen to be six foot tall and I agree with you, but I think that the goalposts and getting buff and getting ripped seems like it's too much uh, squeeze to be worth that amount of juice. And then somebody said, yeah, that's because you're six feet tall. You'll still get a girlfriend to love you just for being that tall. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I don't think everybody has to be ripped, but I think you should be fit. I think you should strive to get more fit. All right, how about this, more fit? Like, you know, I just saw a friend the other day 
He used to be a lot bigger, and he trimmed down. I'm not saying he's got to have a six-pack. He doesn't need it, but from where he was at, he looks a lot better. So it's really just about where you're coming from. Point number three. Some people were pointing out that it seems like the Western world tends to focus more on surface level manifestation of testosterone, violence, and dominance. Uh, basically, race, looks, height, pop culture, status, where it's not as true in the East. Yeah. Why is that like shocking to people? Uh, I think that a lot of people, they do grow up with a dad that doesn't tell them that, or the dad themselves may be from the, either the immigrant enclave, a enclave community in America or still trapped in an Eastern mindset where they don't coach their sons about the, I guess, high school popularity contest in the West that seems to perpetuate far beyond high school. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you just look at the icons in this country, most U S presidents, actually every single one has been at least six feet tall. Um, you look at the movie stars, even if they're not big, they're usually all trimmed and ripped. You know, at least the, the superstars. You know, America, we love sports. Sports athletes are all fit, uh, top of the game. We love military in America. Military strong. Well, to have yeah, a strong military, I, hey, you better I'm not be gonna fit. lie. Hey, guys, I'll show the study right here. American women have more typically voted for the better looking presidential candidate. Hey. Gavin Newsom is a horrible governor. He's really good looking. That's all I'm saying, man. Um, but other people were pointing out that Bezos, Warren Buffett, and Zuckerberg were never that good looking when they came up and they're billionaires. But then other people came up and said, yeah, but then how come specifically for Bezos and Zuckerberg, once they hit some sort of magic number of like 50 billion, they decided to try to look max like they were like frat boys in college. No, oh, they just want to get more fit. Add another level to their fame. Add another like, you know, even if you just want to stay relevant, that's a way to do it is get buff and do martial arts because then that's different. And then people are like, oh, wow, this person's like doing something new. Yeah. I don't really see if there's any, I don't understand the criticism behind that. I don't get it. What do you mean? The criticism of saying- How, that, Why would you criticize Bezos and Zuckerberg? Oh, no, he's not criticized. Yeah. Well, basically some guy was like defending not getting buff and another person came back with a counterpoint saying, yeah, but even Bezos and Zuckerberg fell victim to essentially what is widespread American culture. No, no. You should try to get fit if you've never tried to get fit before uh point number four other people were bringing up that it would have been way worse for these guys if they were short yeah. because especially if some of the guys were short and not that cool looking or buff looking they would have got even have been treated even worse wow getting side eyes getting looks but not the looks that you wanted that's so sad if you were five six you'd get ignored you'd be invisible right they might sometimes. not even try to like serve you at the restaurant Oh, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It depends on the, you know, it the depends on the fishbowl. It depends on the fishbowl. Some fishbowls are only going to care about money. Other fishbowls are going to care about some perceived status of like swag and stuff like that. It really, yeah. really depends on sort of like the narrow slices of society that you position yourself within. You know, within. guys, I think one thing that everybody's overlooking is like this buff and fit friend who spends more time at the gym, who probably wears more fitted t shirts. He probably just overall looks better and has probably acts cooler because he spent more time in the gym around other fit, you know, muscular ripped guys. And he's thought about it. And it's like the more thought you've put into getting buff and ripped, then the more you're likely to take on those other behaviors from the other people that are also buff and ripped. So if the skinny 5'10 guy who's 160 kind of looks and feels like the vibe is like a gamer, that's not going to really play well in Europe. But if the other buff guy looks like he seems like a buff, like a, even a gymnast, you know, because like gymnasts are really buff or a weightlifter or some type of athlete, if he can be viewed as that, then of course he's way cooler for that. Right. Point number five, somebody said, for men, it's physique privilege and for women, it's looks privilege. Um, yeah, I think that physique... The reason why, and it, like I said, it varies on the fishbowl, but the reason why physique matters for men is I think it's projected testosterone because that's the different, that's the androgen difference between yeah. men and women, right? Testosterone to estrogen. And when women are really attractive and good looking, it is typically a physical manifestation of estrogen. Yeah. And guys are looking for high estrogen levels. Women are looking for higher testosterone levels. Mm. 
Um, last but not least, there's this really interesting point. Somebody said uh, there was a couple Filipinos saying, I don't know if it's just because I'm Filipino, but I tend to never get any racism in Europe. Well, I would need to see how this person looks and how this person dresses. Because yeah. a lot of Filipinos are pretty fly. They dress yeah. well. So, And I, I noticed that the Filipino guys who are particularly outspoken, they may be more racially ambiguous and good looking, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, possibly. But even if they're not, even if you're just, even if you look like a, a tan Asian, but you like are dressed well, like there's all these different factors that play into how someone judges you. Yeah, I mean, and like, as an East Asian, sometimes in East Asia, people don't want tan skin because it's not as like high class, but they don't understand that in the West, tan skin makes you like more of a bro and pe right. people treat you like more bro-ish with uh, more, I guess, male fraternity or camaraderie oftentimes when you're tanner. Yeah. I mean, my overall takeaway is this, guys. Physique is definitely part of it. Is it the number one? I don't know. We could argue about how the pie slices divvy up with the percentages. Oh, it's your facial features. It's your angles in your face. It's your facial projection with your nose and your head. Oh, it's the physique. It's just how ripped you are. Oh, it's your height. It's like... All those are factors. Like, well, it all plays into the equation, right? Yeah, but everybody's equation is kind of different. Yeah. Well, no, I think everybody scannings, everybody else's equation is different on what they scan. So people in an open area are scanning most likely, unless you have some very eye-catching face, whether good or bad. People are not looking at your face. They don't really know exactly what you look at, look, look, look like in a crowd in like a, a square area, you know, like Times Square. You're just kind of vaguely seeing these shapes and outfits of clothing. That's why people wear loud clothing. That's why people wear suits. That's why people have long, luscious hair because like if you can't see their facial features, you're just catching a vibe for how they stand, how they walk, how they're dressed. It's just, you're not even capturing their face. Like a lot of these people don't even know what you look like. They just kind of know you're Asian, skinny, and walk with a hunchback. You know what I mean? Right. Or you're like, okay. You're like, oh, they're, they're, oh, wait, I'm sorry. An Italian accent would be like, oh, no, it's, a, it's an Asian gamer. Chinese gamer yeah, yeah, yeah. is a nerd. It's not a cool. Like, that's what, how quickly people are categorizing you. Like, oh, that's an Asian athlete. Oh, he's a buff guy. He's a buff Asian. Oh, you saw him in the Oh, Olympics he's a physical 100 Asian. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, well, now that we have all those shows out, if you look like a buff physical 100 guy, that's going to serve you better and get you treated better than uh, the other people, you know? Right. Um, I would say this. I think the biggest thing about being genetically at a disadvantage with certain traits where it's difficult to manifest, let's just say manifest testosterone, right? Whether it's facially, body-wise, height-wise, because height is a part of the stature and the physique as well. But I think the thing is, it sets you down a path to not value those things, oftentimes, where it's like, you can work on them, but it sets you down a path where you don't work on them. Mm. Because maybe people group off when they're younger and then like maybe this guy's not in shape and he groups off with other people who are not in shape and then all of a sudden they're just a bunch of group guys that are not in shape like rolling off to Europe together. Plus, obviously, on top of the phenotype thing, people are really going to feel comfortable picking on you guys. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's just like, like I said, guys, I'm not saying it's not wrong that the Asian aspect comes into play, but it's also, there's a ton of other factors that are within your control that yeah. come into play. Exactly. And um, I just think that, man, there's, a, there, there's this really good beginning to the, um, this Netflix movie called The Killer. And this guy, he always says, you gotta take the emotion out of everything. Like all these things that are uh, maybe you got wronged, you got slighted, you have uh, different cards than somebody else. You have to work two times, three times, four times as hard as a cousin or a brother or a sister at something to uh, get, you know, the level that they were naturally born at. He's like, man, you just have to remove the emotion from everything and just see the math behind everything and then make reads off that. Mm. So I think that that's what I would recommend to this guy if he wants to go to Italy again with his friends. Mm -hmm. because he's seen the math play out right in front of his eyes. I'm not saying the math is fair. I'm not saying the math is moral, but the math is mathing. Right. Anyway, guys, uh, I, think, I think things that I would recommend is Muay Thai. I would recommend, you know, strength training. I, I like basketball, but you got to play basketball the right way. I think a lot of people play basketball the wrong way and, and lean into it in the worst ways possible. But I, I really recommend Muay Thai, basketball, and strength training. Mm. All right, everybody. Uh, physique definitely matters, but let us know in the comments down below what your experiences are. Uh, I can tell you that 
you know, in a world that values physical fitness and sports and military in the Western world, especially, yes, strength matters. It's a showing of testosterone, yeah. showing of that you're not weak. Especially in the West where it's less imperialistic, it's less feudalistic, it's best, less based on like where your family stands in some sort of uh, imperial or aristocratic hierarchy. It's going to come down to a lot of things that your dad did not, could not, or may not have taught you. So listen, guys, the math is mathing. Your fishbowl matters. Let us know what you guys think of this guy's post in the comment section below. Let us know, do you agree, disagree, augment, supplement, compliment what he said. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.